flautas, or taquitos, are tortillas that have been filled, rolled, and fried crispy, normally in a lot of oil. I'm going to show you how you can do it in just a film of oil. It's less greasy, less messy, and still super good. I'll show you flour and corn versions, and I'm not attempting any kind of Mexican authenticity here. In fact, my filling is just going to be this. A 15-ounce can of beans, a 4-ounce can of green chilies, and about 4 ounces of any melting cheese. This is Monterey Jack. I know that you don't need instructions on how to open a can of beans, but one good way is to dump it in your mixing bowl, fill with water, swish around to wash off all that canning goo, and then just block them with your hand as you drain. It's just like washing rice. It saves you from getting a strainer dirty. That was a 439 gram can, 113 grams of canned chilies, and about the same weight of cheese. I'm just tearing it in chunks so you get distinct gooey pockets inside the flautas. Heterogeneity. Season with whatever Latin spices you've got. That's cumin, some dried oregano, some garlic powder, or just a little salt. These things are already salty. Stir that up, and here's a trick. Squish some of the beans. Not all of them, but a few good handfuls. This creates a free starch paste in there that will bind all the chunks together if you now stir it thoroughly. Taste it. I don't think it needs any more salt. The flavor to labor ratio of this filling is off the charts. And hey, it's meatless. My condiment with this batch is just going to be some pico de gallo. You could buy it in a jar if you want. I'm dicing a shallot instead of an onion because I don't want a whole big onion's worth. One jalapeno. Leave the ribs in if you want it hot. Take them out if you don't. Nice and fine. One tomato diced. Oh, how I ache for real summer tomatoes. This thing is terrible. One or two limes juiced right in there, and then some cilantro leaves if you like cilantro. Maybe a little salt in. There's our salsa fresca. I really prefer corn tortillas for flautas, but they're a little trickier, so I'm going to show you the flour ones first. Taco size, a nice little log of our filling in the middle, and this is not necessary, but it helps if you wet your finger and melt a little sticky starch paste onto the seal end of the tortilla. Make sure that you position them seam side down, or they'll pop right open again. We've got enough filling for at least six of these. This will feed three or four people, depending on how heavy you make the tortilla to bean ratio. You could put less filling in each and get more total food. You could fry these in any large frying pan. Traditionally, you'd partially or fully submerge them in hot oil, but since I'm just going to use a thin film, I don't need steep sides, so griddle. I can do a ton at once on here, and I don't have to get around any sides to flip things around. I'm heating a film of olive oil on medium-low heat, and in these go seam side down. We've got to set that seam before we do anything else. I'm just sweeping the oil around with each one to make sure that it's got enough fat underneath it to fry it golden. I might turn the heat up a bit, but I'm being conservative. If you brown these too fast, they go uh, prematurely rigid and burst at the seams. It's safer to go slow. This is a cheap griddle. It heats unevenly, so I'm just swapping positions to make sure that everything gets brown on the bottom. You could do this in a pan, but you can see why it's nice to have the space. Get the opposite side of each of these nice and brown. Going slowly on medium-low also leaves you plenty of time for the filling to get hot and for the cheese to melt. If you want, you can try to line them up on their sides, each supporting his fellow like a row of soldiers. I wouldn't try to brown the opposite side. You can see the seams starting to buckle as these go crispy. Three brown sides is plenty crisp enough. Couple on a plate. I like to have my condiments on the side, Asian style if you like. If I wanted soggy tortillas, I would have made enchiladas. Holy cow, that is a rewarding weeknight meal, even if it is a little bit heavy on the carbs. If you need to be watching those like I do, consider balancing out this dinner with a breakfast from Magic Spoon Cereal, the sponsor of this video. The new cookies and cream flavor is just too good. Magic Spoon allows me to enjoy the sweet cereal flavors of my youth without totally destroying my ever-aging physique. These have zero sugar per serving, four or five net carbs depending on the flavor, and a whopping 13 grams of protein. These are made of milk protein, like a muscle shake. Do us both a favor, hit my link in the description, and get these awesome limited edition flavors. The maple waffle tastes like donuts. Use my code Ragusia for $5 off before these flavors sell out. Or you can build your own box from the best-selling flavors. Fruity and peanut butter are my favorite. Your box has a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't find the stuff to be utter magic like I do, get your money back. Use my link and code downstairs for $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon. All right, for my corn tortilla flautas, I'm going to do a different condiment, some quick pickled onions, or again, shallots in this case. I love them. They have thinner layers, so they pickle faster. But slice these into thin semicircles before you do anything else. So they have maximum time in that optional spoon or two of sugar, and here's the vinegar. Any vinegar is fine, but red wine vinegar enhances the purple color. Don't worry if the sugar doesn't dissolve all the way. It will as you let this sit in the fridge. If you can do it a day or two before, even better. My filling is going to be exactly the same, except I'm using kidney beans just for yucks, rinsed and drained, a little can of any chilies for pungency and acidity. The canning juice is sour, which is important, and some jack cheese. You could use vegan cheese, or you could skip it. Maybe pour in a little olive oil for richness instead. Cumin, oregano, garlic powder, and salt. Stir it up and partially squish. 
squish. You don't need the cheese for binding because you've got that starch paste running through everything. Don't forget to taste for seasoning. Some canned beans are way saltier than others. You gotta taste. So corn tortillas are trickier because they're brittle. There's no gluten. It helps to get the ultra thin ones. They're more pliable. And it also helps to wrap them in a damp towel and heat them until warm and steamy. The microwave is perfect. That makes them even more pliable. Lay out a little log of filling and then here's an even better glue. A little cornstarch dissolved in some water. Heat it until it just boils and gelatinizes. This is an amazingly effective sealer on corn tortillas. But as always, position all their weight on top of that seam to hold it shut. If the tortilla has a natural curve, roll with it. Don't fight it. These are a little smaller than the flour ones, so I'm distributing the filling across 8 to 10 of these. Again, olive oil on medium-low heat, seam side down, sweep the oil around to ensure greasy bottoms. If you're nervous, you could fry these one portion at a time in a pan. Non-stick is foolproof. You can only feed a few people with this dinner anyway. If you're feeding a crowd, make enchiladas. I have a recipe in the description. I'm a person who sometimes has trouble with the mealy texture of corn tortillas, but I love these because we're frying them crisp like chips. I would not try to brown the sides of these. They're too delicate. Top and bottom is fine as long as you get them nice and crispy. You can turn the heat off and just store these on the griddle as it cools. Keeps them hot. Again, sort of Thai style. I've got a little pile of cilantro leaves on the side. Here's my pickles after just 20 minutes in the vinegar. Darn good, but do it hours or days in advance and they'll blow your mind. Just leave them in the fridge. They're not preserved. That gooey bean filling is amazing, even if you're not a big bean person. And listen to how crispy... So there you go. Combine ideas from either recipe and have a great weeknight.